This tutorial explains how to create and connect to a database using the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an expert for databasing in R. So without too much talk, I'll head it over to Kirby. Hello everybody, I'm Kirby White and I want to take the next few minutes with you to talk about databasing in R and R Studio. We're gonna cover three topics. The first is why a database might be beneficial. And then we'll talk about how to connect to an existing one. And thirdly, if you don't already have a database to work with, I'll show you how to create a sample one right in R and R Studio that you can use to practice these techniques, even if you don't already have one to work with. So let's jump in and talk about the benefits of a database. And these benefits are really relative to using a traditional method like importing Excel or CSV files to R and instead connecting directly to a database and working with the data that's stored at its source. And so some of these benefits are things like efficient storage and retrieval. A relational database is designed to reduce the redundancy of data, which means you can store large amounts of information with much smaller sizes compared to something like an Excel or even a CSV file. The second thing is that databases don't have an inherent limitation on the number of records. It really is limited by the hard drive capacity of the devices that the database is stored on compared to something like Excel that only has a million rows, which is a lot for many applications. Um, but it really is limited when you get into big data sets like meteorological weather um, or organizational data. It just can be too small for your uses. The third thing is that a database is always up to date. If you're connecting directly to the data source as data gets edited, added, or deleted, you don't need to go ask somebody for the updated file. You simply redo your query and you immediately are accessing the most relevant information. The fourth thing is that it again allows multiple users to work with a database. You can have people adding information or editing it at the same time that other people are accessing it to, uh, to do their organizational analytics on or build dashboards or things like that. And so a database is designed and optimized for multiple users interacting with a single source of data at the same time compared to a file that would require multiple people emailing each other uh, different files and, and I'm sure you've experienced that somebody's usually working with an out-of-date file that then they need to redo some work once they get the newest version. The last two points are related to each other and that's data privacy and authentication protocols. And this really is um, much more of an issue in light of the recent like GDPR regulations that came out in Europe over the last few years and increasing data privacy concerns in the United States. But a database is designed to allow some information to be stored separately from other pieces of information and then be joined together only by personnel that are able to access them. And so a database has much better uh, user permissions compared to something like an Excel or CSV file where once somebody has the file, they have all the data that's in it. And that's not necessarily the case with a database. So that's some of the benefits of a database. The downside is that they're more complex to set up and administer and manage and maintain. And it usually requires technical training to be able to do that sort of thing. So there are trade-offs with it, but if you're in a place that has a database administrator and you already have SQL databases set up, I highly recommend learning these techniques to access that data because it's relatively uh, simple and straightforward. Uh, perhaps easier than you're thinking. So let's go ahead and jump in and start seeing how we can work with this in R. Here I have uh, R Studio open with an R Markdown file ready to go. And the main packages that we're gonna be working with for this, for databasing, are ODBC and DBI. ODBC contains the drivers for uh, interfacing between R and R Studio and the database itself. And then DBI contains several functions for querying and interacting with that database. Here is the generic function for connecting to a database. It's in the DBI uh, package. The function name is dbconnect. And there's a few uh, parameters that you would uh, that I would expect most people to use. That is uh, DRV or the drivers. That's asking what type of um, 
uh, what type of database are you connected to? And uh, you'll have two arguments for it. So this first one here is just saying that you're gonna be pulling driver information from the ODBC package, like we already talked about. And the second argument here is the actual name of the driver. And so this is where you would type in, um, you know, you would need to look up what it is, but something like a, a Microsoft SQL Server or an Amazon Web Services Redshift cluster, something like that is gonna go in here to tell it what type of database you're connected to. The server and database arguments are really what, where you uh, give the address information for the database you're connecting to, and then the name of the particular database because a server could have multiple databases on it. Other arguments that you will likely use but are optional is user and password, and that's how you can log in and be able to use the permissions assigned to you to be able to access private information or financial information or something like that. And so really this function is all you need to establish a connection profile to the database. And just by tradition, it's stored in an object called con, and that is the connection profile that R and R Studio is gonna use in future functions to access that database with other queries. So if you already have a database, this is the function that you need to be working with. If you don't already have one, or you don't wanna bother with finding these settings for now, I'm gonna talk about how to create a sample database in the R and R Studio memory so that you can practice this uh, without an existing one. The extra packages that you'll wanna install and use are R SQL, R SQL Lite, and Tidyverse. Now, Tidyverse is not specifically a databasing package, but it has some, some functions and abilities to interact with databases that, that allow you to use your existing R knowledge in a way that you may not be aware of already. So go ahead and install and load those. And the Tidyverse package comes with pre-built data sets. It comes with tables already populated with information. And we can activate those by uh, calling these lines of code, data, uh, population in quotes, and then if you wanna take a, a, a preview of it, you can run this line of code, population, to see what kind of data comes out of there. Now that we've loaded those, um, those tables, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild con, which is, of course, the connection profile to a database, and we're gonna use that dbconnect function again, but we're gonna do something slightly different. So if you set it up this way, as I've uh, demonstrated here, this will build an empty database in the R memory systems. And when you run this line of code, DB list tables, it'll show you this character zero, meaning that you have a database, but there's nothing in it yet. And that's okay because our next chunk of information here is using the DB write table functions, also from the DBI package. And you can see here that our argument for a connection is we're using this con argument, and that's, of course, the connection profile to the sample database we just built. And then what we're doing is we're taking the tables that came with the tidyverse package and we're loading those into the database. So this is how we populate the database with these two tables, the who and population tables. And then when you run DB list tables and you ask, hey, what tables are in this database, you'll get these two elements, population and who. And so this is where I'm going to stop this tutorial because now you've learned the benefits of a database, how to connect to an existing one, and how to, to create a sample one. Now, before we go, I'll show you that this is what a SQL query could look like. And so if you go ahead and, and uh, replicate or, or type in this code, this will run a query on the database that you've just created where you're asking for data from both tables to be merged together and delivered to you in a format that now you can use in R. Another tutorial and video is gonna go into more depth on this, so I hope you'll stick around and watch that. Thanks. Thanks a lot to Kirby for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about the background of Kirby Wright, you may check out his profile at the Statistics Globe homepage. I will put a link to this profile into the description of the video. And on this profile page, you will also find other tutorials that Kirby has created for Statistics Globe. In case you have liked this video, make sure to leave a comment below or give thumbs up on the video and make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.